you have read my book, I presume, The Unseen Therapist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I've revised that book from time to time. The I, I have the latest one. Okay. All right. So have you read it once, twice? Uh, where are you on all that? I've, I've read it, the whole thing once, and then I've gone back and read sections over again. Okay. So. Now, the very, the last part of that. The personal book, piece, right. The personal piece. I asked you to make 30 or more, a list of 30 or more specific events. Have you done that? Well, I'm having some difficulty with that because I think because I've just done this rather intense whole year thing, I've gone through so many issues <laughs> that I'm running out of. I think I'm running out of them, but I mean. Oh, you're, you're all fixed? I guess there's always more, but um, I actually did some more digging and I think I have a tabletop, so I have to look for the um, legs supporting that but consciously there's nothing really bothering me that i mean but i have as i said been working through this and working through this and working through this for a while now so i don't have a list <laughs> that's the bottom line <laughs> okay well the list is going to be important okay because right. we're not going to be able to to deliver this to you unless you have something to deliver it for right okay but you said you had issues. You had tabletops. You know, look for table legs. What What are your tabletops? I think um, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, I think that throughout my whole my whole life has been uh, fear that there's been fear. Of Which, of course, is not specific, but um, of just general fear. I mean. Um, Even well, one of my first dreams I can remember as a child was um, I was running down the driveway. Someone was chasing me and I was so afraid that I froze, couldn't move. And um, so that fear must have come in at a pretty young age and no reason for it. You know, I mean, I had really stable family life and I don't know. Okay. Well, behind that, behind that, I'm guessing we're going to do a little exploring here. Okay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Behind, there's a cause for that. Everything has a cause, okay? So if you get this fear response down the driveway kind of thing, okay? Yeah. And you don't know what it is. There is a cause. Someplace out there, there is this cause. Now, as far as you know, is, were you f being af afraid of physical harm or dying? That's interesting. I think, um, you know, I've been through cancer. Uh, three times. So uh, I think that fear of dying thing is very valid. But at that time, although maybe my mother scared the heck out of me, maybe because she was overprotective. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm making a little note here. How does that fear limit you in current life? I think that it stops me from professionally from going out and offering my services. Although I can't pinpoint why it would. Maybe just lack of confidence. Maybe it's that. I don't know. Well, or possibly. And again, we're exploring. That's what I want to do with you is explore. Let me back up here a second. Uh, we're, we're going to be here a while. So I hope you have some time. Yes, I do. Okay. Because I want to be as thorough with you as I, as I Thank can. You. Okay. So um, you need to understand that, that, that I know very little about Barb, only what you tell me, the bits and pieces and. Right. Okay. So I have to guess the reason to guesses, but I have to guess. So don't let me guess something, make some assumption and start okay. going with that without correcting me. If I'm not on point. Okay. okay. Otherwise we're going to waste some time. Right, okay? right. So in this, 
in this fear, professional fear, putting yourself out there the way you worded that, I was hearing, and you correct me, the fear of rejection. Failure, rejection. Fear of rejection. Yeah. If you don't do it right, somebody's, somebody's going to reject you, fire you, you know, they don't want to be your client anymore. Uh, I, I have this thing a lot that what if I can't help them? What well, if I can't help them? All right. What if you can't help them? Are you going to feel rejected or should we be using another term? Maybe um, useless. Useless? Uh, is that a form of not good enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me... Uh, you know, I, I flip-flop on it because I say to myself, okay, I'm going to do the best I can do with all integrity. And that is all I can ever do. Mm -hmm. So rationally, I see that. But... Yeah, see, I would still feel bad if yeah. I couldn't help them. Yeah, th th thank you for that. Thank you for that. One of the things I find with great regularity, almost 100%, okay, <laughs> when we have emotional issues, they almost always don't line up with the rationale behind it. Uh, logically, you shouldn't feel that way, but it emotionally you do <laughs> and you respond everybody does that i do that we all do that okay so in one sense if just to take fear of rejection for example just about everybody nobody likes to be rejected okay? right, right. there's there's different ver different levels of that okay um so if you get Somebody, in one way, you can say, yeah, people can give me their opinions or whatever, but they're not really rejecting me. They're just giving me their opinions. That's one logical way to look mm -hmm. at it. Okay. They don't know really what's behind everything. Da, 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 da. However, we tend not to do that. We tend to go, oh, okay, okay I did something wrong. Then Now what's wrong with me? And, you know, and we go into a, either a little or a major tailspin of some kind. All right. It, it makes me feel helpless when, um, you know, I was working with this lady and I didn't feel like I was helping her or something. I didn't feel like, you know, and I felt like I wanted so much to help her. And um, I didn't feel like we were getting there. It made me feel helpless. Like I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Okay. And again, we're exploring. I'm getting the idea that feeling helpless is a feeling you just don't want. Right. Okay. And it's the same thing in the driveway. If I'm frozen, I'm helpless. Okay. All right. All right. Well, well now we go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, in the driveway, would be more like vulnerable, but in the work situation, it wasn't vulnerable. But it was helpless. It was all helpless. Okay. And yet you can sit at the feet of Jesus and not feel helpless? Pardon? And yet you can sit at the feet of Jesus and not feel helpless. Did I say it right? Yes. Oh, yes. You can't be helpless at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> Because you're in this really um, great place. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, we would, we would that's friend, true. That's true. We would, said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't feel that when I'm there. All right. Well, we would translate that to when you're in the presence of the unseen therapist. Same thing. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. I, I don't want to get involved in uh, the. The unseen therapist is a non-denominational term on purpose. Yes, I, I've gone through all that with Sherry because I had a lot of, um, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to do anything that goes against my beliefs. And, and we went, I went through a lot of that with yeah. Sherry. <laughs> okay. She explained all right. that. <laughs> all right. I, I, uh, bear with me for, for a moment okay. or two. I would like to 
do a little testing with you. Again, we're exploring, et cetera. Okay. And I've got some sentences that I'd like to have you say. I'll give you this sentence, short little sentence. Say it out loud first, okay. and then tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does it feel? Not the, not the logic of it. We okay. want the emotion of it. Very important. Okay. So here's, here's the um, first se sentence. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And that feels like 100% true. <laughs> so that would be a 10. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Try, try this one. I'm helpless. I'm helpless. That's um, less because I know I well, then that's rational again. Let yeah, me see. that's right. I yeah, see. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. easy to fall into that. So we're yeah, looking, yeah, I see that. Looking for your emotional response. Okay. I am helpless. Helpless. I think it's less. Like, I think it's about a six or seven. All right. Okay. Um, it's so hard to keep that rationality out. Um, I know. I know. <laughs> so, so we're not into perfection here. Okay? We're into guidelines. We're, we're, we're exploring. We're trying to find stuff. Okay. Clues. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find clues. Okay. So um, this one, this one maybe might be a little more difficult for you to get a hold of, but try it. Okay. I'm not lovable. I'm not lovable. That's really strong. All right. Estimate a number. Ten. Ten. All right. All right. Um, okay. I'll give you another one or two. Okay. Uh, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. I'm only about a five there. Okay. I don't count. I don't count. Again, that's low too. You know, that's a four or a five. Okay. All right. Well, let's back up a second. We'll go to some of those earlier ones. Not good enough, not lovable, both being tens. And, and when we got to not lovable, I was looking at your face and I could, I could tell that that hit you. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, anyone who grows up, starting with childhood, even though you, as you describe it, had a workable or nice family arrangement, you know, you weren't abused apparently. And, and I all wasn't of that. abused, but um, when I was born, my father had tuberculosis and he was in a sanatorium. So I actually didn't meet him until I was two years old. So my mother and I lived with his parents until he got out of the hospital because he had tuberculosis. So, okay. and I was born with it too. All right. You've had cancer three times. And tuberculosis. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, that, now, yeah. now to me, but again, Barb, you always correct me. Okay. You always correct me. All right. To me, having serious disease, the tuberculosis, you could say, well, my father had it. I have it genetically. That, 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 okay. We can argue the genetic point, but the cancer point three times uh it, if you look in the medical book and go you read my book unseen therapy and the medical books you will see that nobody in the medical profession has a clue what causes cancer they don't have a clue what causes any of those any any of our ailments they so they treat simply they really don't know um the first one the melanoma Though they do think maybe the sun. My mother said I did have a couple of bad sunburns. So I, I, I had more sunburns than I mean I, I can remember peeling my skin off <laughs> frequently. And you didn't get it. Yeah. And I and I didn't get it. Yeah. Could that be a contributor? Well, okay, maybe. We find over and over and over again 
that we have, there may be diet contributors and right. lifestyle, yeah, da, da, da. But the sugar. Main, <laughs> yeah, sugar and the, but the main contributor to all this stuff I've found over and over and over, and you will see more and more evidence of this as this unfolds for you are unresolved emotional issues. Right. And, stress, stress from well, that, from that. Yeah. Okay. Say so now, your father wasn't around and you didn't see him until you were age two. Mm -hmm. Now, what's important in that is not the fact that your father wasn't there until age two. That may seem like an important thing, but the really, well. I don't remember it, you know. So. Okay. All right. But what's important about that, and you may be too young to even discover it. Okay. But. It's never going to be the facts that happen, like your mother was overprotective of you. That's a fact, okay? We're not so concerned about the facts as we are about your response to them. We can't change the facts. The fact that your mother was overprotective, the fact that your father was gone for two years, all that, those are facts. It's your response to them. What does that mean to you? And somehow you got the idea that you're not good enough and you're not lovable. Big time. And here you are decades later and it still gets to you. Right, right. Okay. That's cool. All right. That's a real limit. That's a real limit. Now, I got to tell you, sometimes, Barb, I can rattle on and on and on. Okay, so so if I wear if I wear you out, <laughs> let me, let me know. Okay, we're recording this so you can go over it. Yeah. And stuff. I appreciate that. But I want to put a couple of things together and get your reaction to it because we're still looking for issues. We're still looking for issues. All right. Now, as you probably know, I am not a doctor. I've never even had a course in anatomy, so I, I I'm not. <laughs> I'm not one to really discuss medical things. Okay. All right. However, however, there is one medical fact that I'm sure about, and every doctor that you'll talk to will agree with this. I've talked to many. I, I can't tell you how. I know many, many doctors, MDs. Everyone agrees, with, all of them. I've never heard anything to the contrary. They go, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And that's this. When you are carrying around a negative emotion, let's say you're angry about something, all right? When that happens, your system creates a literal cascade of negative chemistry, okay? Your adrenaline goes out of balance. Your cortisol goes out of balance. Hundreds of repair mechanism chemical equations in your body get compromised, and your immune system's got to go deal with that. Okay. And it does. Okay. But when it's got a lot to deal with, it, it can't deal with other things. And so your body, your body ends up manifesting other diseases like cancer, like tuberculosis, like whatever it may be. Okay. If your immune system wasn't busy dealing with all this other stuff, it would handle these insults to the body that happen, okay? And you wouldn't have the cancer. Da, 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 da. Every doctor will agree with that. You have a negative thought, negative stuff, here it comes. Immune systems diverted, okay? Well, I'm, I'm living proof both times. I mean, one time was just insignificant cancer because I found it and I told them. But two times were pretty serious. Both times I was in situations that, I wasn't happy in, and um, both times the cancer got me out of those situations. Uh huh. So okay. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So you had an emotional reason to create the cancer as well as the. Absolutely. Uh, now, yeah. Okay. What I was going to put together there though, was that if you're carrying around and I'm not lovable and I'm not good enough thing. Okay. Even though you're not consciously thinking about it all the time. It's still kicking around under the surface. There's something wrong with you. You're not lovable, okay? Very important thing, not lovable. We all want love. And we see 
seek it in our various ways, and we get it in our various ways. But we need to really get it. And we've, when we get a 10, I'm not lovable, even though rationally that may not be true. Okay. Well, let me stop there. Logically, is that true? You're not lovable or do you have good friends and all that? I, I do, but I don't know if I believe them. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You know, like um, my partner, um, I always think he doesn't love me, but he's always, you know, he's, I mean, he gave me a button that said hundred percent loved. <laughs> I mean, he tries to, you know, All right. uh, tell but me you, actually it's not true, but I still have that feeling. Yeah, I know. Okay, good. Wouldn't it be nice to be free of that feeling? Yeah. Okay. Nice for him too. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't know all your personal life, but chances are you're going to get along better. Uh, the sex life is going to be better. There's going to be a lot of, lots of things that will amp up and be really nice, and et cetera. But we need freedom on that. And if your inner system is saying, he's saying 100% love you, got a button and all of this, okay? <laughs> Trying his darndest. Yeah, he <laughs> is. Every day is Valentine's Day, and you're saying, but I don't buy it. Right. That's it. You're in a prison. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, okay. Does it seem to you like we're going someplace here? I mean, we're. Yes, definitely. Okay. Now, um, you said you talked about tabletop and table legs. Did you learn that from EFTI or from my writings or what? Oh, that was from a long time ago, right? From the tape, the CDs and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. That, yeah, I, I, I'm sure from I mentioned the it. the original manual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Okay. Although EFTI does still talk about that a lot. Okay. All right. Or John D. did anyway. Yeah. Okay. I love John D., by the way. Yeah, she talks about you. She um, she goes back to your teachings a lot in her teaching. Okay. Well, anyway. So we want to look now for cause. Somehow or other, you're carrying around. I'm not lovable. That has a cause. It wouldn't be there unless there was a cause. That's the engineer in me speaking. Okay. <laughs> That's just, that's the way it works. Okay. It has to have a cause. So as far as you know, where did that, well, the cause would be a tabletop. Okay. Excuse me. The issue, I'm not lovable as a tabletop. Mm -hmm. The table legs supporting that tabletop are the specific events giving rise to that. You concluded it. As your life unfolded, I'm not lovable, I'm not lovable, I'm not lovable, by these various specific events, okay? So as far as you know, if you can, what's your best guess at a contributing cause? You know, that? there was this incident when I was young, and do you want me to tell you all this? I mean, okay, sure. all right. Um, and now that you're saying it, I'm thinking that maybe when my father came back from the hospital, um, he hadn't seen my mother. Well, I mean, I think she was allowed limited visits because TB was contagious, right? So I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I think she had limited access to seeing. Anyway, when he came back, I, I think they very much wanted to be together, the two of them. And here I was you know, coming in. So one night I was in bed and I heard my mother screaming and I ran in there. You know? <laughs> I hope I don't start crying. But anyway, because it's nothing to cry about really. But um, yeah, I, yeah, yes. If you're ready to cry, <laughs> there is a cause for that, but keep going. Okay. Well, they were in bed and uh, she was screaming and I thought he was hurting her. And um little kid right 
<laughs> I've got to stand up to him. Oh, goodness. I've told this story and I, I never got emotional about it like this. But um, and I said, you know, stop hurting her. Stop hurting her. And she said, don't be silly. He's tickling me. <laughs> so and, and how old are you at this? How old are you at this time? I don't know, but very tiny, maybe three or four. Uh -huh. So here I was, you know, ready to slay the dragon on her behalf. And she said, and she's telling me I'm being silly and really kind of making fun of me. And well, I tick tickling her, tickling her. I'm, <laughs> I'm presuming there's some kind of romantic play going on. And it's well, not really, I guess, maybe. Not, yeah, not I really didn't think about that. <laughs> okay. But, but go ahead. Go but ahead. yeah, I mean, they were just messing around, right? I mean, they uh -huh. were just. So, um, but it was the way she spoke to me saying, you know, um, don't be silly that he would never hurt me, whatever she said, that made me feel really humiliated. And, you know, I just, um, and so anyway, so what I did later through all this stuff I've done in the last year or two, I went back and I just rewrote the whole thing in my mind. And I said, okay, I walked in, I said that, and she turned to me and she said, thank you so much for sticking up for me. I really appreciate that you did that. And I rewrote it in my head. I just rewrote it. That's how okay. I dealt with it. Yeah, when you really get into it, you cry. Yeah, and that's really surprising me because... Well, okay. The the remote thing, this is my view. Now, again, you're always correcting me because I'm not you, all right? Mm -hmm. But rewriting stuff, nice thought. Nice thought. Well, can be useful. Okay. On, on Am I guess right? Coping. Well, method? I call it a band aid or putting a coat of paint on it, or you're not really getting down to what's really there. Whitewash. Okay. White, whitewash. Okay. That's another word. You're not getting down to what's really. See, a moment ago, I mean, you were ready to. Yeah, I was. Okay. There. That's yeah. because you were tuning in beneath the whitewash. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we want to get. That's where the freedom really lies. Okay. We can do a whole bunch of cosmetic stuff, which I consider rewriting it to be. That doesn't mean it's not, doesn't have its use, but to me, rewriting it is just a hope that is probably give you a temporary band aid. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. It's still kicking around under the surface. You are still not lovable. So yeah. now, when you come in and mother was being tickled, okay, uh, and wasn't really in some kind of pain as you were presuming, and she says, don't be silly. You said the word was humiliated. I'm going to ask you to think back on that as best you can. I, it's a long time ago. I know. I yeah. Know. I but think I felt stupid. Did you feel not lovable? I didn't think of it that way okay. at that time. I just felt stupid, I guess. Well, some of these terms are, are cousins anyway. You and know, I, if, I if you're. Felt like I was excluded from the horse play there. <laughs> well, excluded is another way of saying yeah. rejection, which is one of our earlier right. terms. Right. It's a, rejection and not lovable are, you know, cousin type terms. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I but was you, insulting, you know, I was not wanted there. Yeah. So that's unlovable. Well, well not wanted, not lovable, rejected, not yeah. good enough. Um, they're all in the same basket. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a specific event. There yeah. is a specific event, which would tell the young child, unless you're going to tell me otherwise the young Barb, okay, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with you, you're not lovable, you don't count, and you buy it. And what else can you do at age three or four? You, you, don't, you don't have the maturity to debate it or anything like that. It's just, you really did a dumb thing, and, and I might, I'm going to guess, you really did a dumb thing again. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Now, you said earlier in this conversation that your mother was overprotective of you. We're not so concerned with the fact that she may have been overprotective. We're concerned with your response to that. Now, see, I'm, I'm asking you a question you probably never thought of before. Okay, but so just do your best. But if she's overprotective, I'm wondering what the very young you, how you would interpret that. If she's overprotective of you, does that mean you're not good enough? Does that mean you can't look out for yourself? That means you always got to have mother around or the big bad world is going to get you? Does it mean you just aren't capable of doing things on your own? Mother's always got to be there. She's telling you, you you're not good enough. Da, 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 da. Well, or something in, else. The way she put it was like, because I had the TB, I had all these health issues um, that I was different than everyone else. Like what my friends did, I couldn't do because of all this, but she didn't put it in that kind of way. She put it like I was special you know, that I was special, but how it was to me was I couldn't fit in with what everybody else was doing. Okay. okay. I mean, you yeah. know, she didn't make it, she didn't put it in a bad way is what I'm trying to say, but, yeah, but, well, okay. she, yeah. but to me as a child, it was like, I can't go do this with my friends. I can't go do that. That's not special. That's, Okay. Again, very important. Very important. Oh, oh, you, you, you get an A in class today because what you just told me was that's your response to it, which is that we can change. We cannot change the fact your mother was overprotective. That's that's like trying to change a baseball score. Right, right. Okay. But your emotional response to it, primarily, your emotional response to it now. That we can change. And that's where the freedom lies. You had an emotional response back then. We can't change that either. Right. Of what it was when you were three or four years old or two or all of that. Okay. But what it is today. Ah. Ah. And that's where the freedom comes. Okay. It's like, it's like um, if you were five years old. And you were riding your bicycle and you fell off and skinned your knee. Okay. The chances are you would cry at the moment and you know have a have an issue about that and so on. But it doesn't hang around typically. Well, just, funny you said that one because it did happen. I did fall off my bicycle, but I fell on the road and there was a car coming and I was terrified. So Okay, now another that's a specific event. So. <laughs> now, now good, 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 good. Okay. So all right. I was guided to give you that little story, and oftentimes we'll we'll find the right on, okay? But anyway, so you fell off your bicycle in front of a car and you were terrified you were gonna get hit. I was terrified that I would get hit. And then I was terrified I wouldn't get my bicycle off the road. My bicycle would get hit. And then I'd still be in trouble for getting the bike wrecked. But yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. And all of that re can reduce down to, I'm not good enough. I did it wrong yet again, you know, <laughs> um, and, all, and all of that. The young child, what I'm hearing you say, makes that conclusion. Mm -hmm. So tabletop, I'm not lovable. I don't count all that stuff. Okay. Specific events. The car is one. Don't be silly is another. And we can find other specific events as yeah. well. Can we not? Yeah. But it's interesting. You mentioned the bicycle. <laughs> all right. Between the bicycle and don't be silly from your mother. Which of those do you do you think has the biggest impact on you? The first one. The bicycle? No, the first one. The oh, oh, okay. All right. Don't be silly. All right. Okay. 
that's a little background. So what we want to do now, and I'm going to ask you to go back to my book, The Unseen Therapist, Personal Peace Procedure, mm -hmm. and start making your list. You can now, I think, find several, yeah. maybe, not, maybe not 30 yet, but you know, uh, no. I, I hope we're opening the door and, you know, yes. there's a, a whole bunch of I'm not lovable yeah. things. Okay. All these things I thought I had dealt with and I thought I rewrote effectively, obviously. <laughs> so I will be able to come up with a list. I'm okay. Sure. So for this purpose here, and what I want to do is get you started. That's the important part of it. I want to do an unseen therapist session with you on the specific of the don't be silly specific event okay but what we're gonna what we're gonna need to do is practice this the way the book unfolds it for you now in the personal peace procedure section that last section in the book yeah. there if you recall it there is a sentence in there that helps you form a specific event property do you recall it I don't think so, but I probably underlined it. Well, I had it set apart. Let's define a specific event. Yeah, but I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you now so we okay. can. This is all being recorded. So you... the moment when and I currently. Yeah, can... there you go. There, that's the sentence. Okay. Yeah. A very important sentence. And in fact, when you are creating your specific events, you're going to want to use that sentence. Okay and fill it in appropriately. And that way you will have a specific event that's more likely to be right on point and properly formed, okay? Okay. So it, it, it says, it starts the moment when, now that, that's an important phrase. Let me go over it with you for a moment. The reason it says the moment when and not the time when, okay? The moment when, because we're looking for a precise emotional crescendo. Like some people might say, well, my father always abused me. Well, that's not your father, apparently, but some people would say that. Okay, my father always, but that's not a specific event. That's something that happened many times over a period of time. We want a very specific, and the yeah. more specific we can get, the more efficient we're right. going to be. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I see the whole thing, but I remember when she said that, how I felt. Yep. There you are. There you are. You get, you get, you get <laughs> kisses and everything. Okay. Very good. Very good. So let's get back to the sentence. The moment when, then you're going to say what happened. And you don't have to have a long drawn out seven, eight paragraphs or something. The moment when my mother said, don't be silly. Now, you know, you know, the rest of it. You right. Could, you could say when I walked in on them and yeah, 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 screaming yeah. if you wanted to. But yeah, it's but the moment when she said, don't be silly. OK, the moment when my mother said, don't be silly. Yeah. And I currently feel we're not interested in how you felt then. We're interested in how you feel now, as you recall it, I currently feel now they may be the same they may be exactly the same okay yeah it's worthless and um and that's the same thing i have when i feel i'm not helping someone i can't help someone it's okay. worthless i said useless before i think but you said helpless helpless it's more specifically worthless i think okay all right good and see the more you get into it the more these things start yeah. to yeah. gel a bit okay yeah. so it, it, see this is a skill you'll be developing it's, it's not the kind of thing we can just say, well, read this paragraph and you got it. Yeah, because worthless and humiliated. Can I do both? Or, yeah. You, you can, but we'll discuss that for the moment. Okay. okay. In a moment. Okay. But for the moment, worthless because you, you said help us before. Yeah. And, okay. And humiliated is sort of a subset of worthless anyway. You know, but right, right, right. Let's take worthless for the moment. Okay. And I, but, so do this, do this, close your eyes now. Go back to that moment. She says, don't be silly. And tell me what, on a scale of zero to 10, 
<laughs> like 10. <laughs> well, no, you know what? Just I just was thinking, and this is such a terrible I should name I was thinking, you witch. <laughs> you know, I'm here to defend you. Uh yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm angry there now, right okay. now. Okay. All right. Now see, see right you've now. got yeah. Okay. And you are, and I am currently angry about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you may be angry because that gives you a worthless feeling. I mean, it's you no, know, that could be there. Okay. But you're currently angry about it. See how, yeah. see how it's important. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm there. I'm going to risk my life <laughs> to save you. Yeah. And, and you discount yeah. it like that. That makes me pretty angry. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, let me get back to that word. You discount it like that. That's another form of saying I'm not lovable. I just got discounted. Yeah. Or, to use my earlier term, I got rejected. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aren't you glad uh, you I'm feeling the anger? <laughs> I'm kind of feeling the anger. Now. All right. Give me a zero to 10 on that anger. That's about an eight. Okay. And that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> well, not really, right? <laughs> no, it has a cause. Felt like it, did. Felt like it did, but not really. <laughs> well, you see, you've been relying upon the Band-Aid, the whitewash, et cetera. Mm. And it's been kicking around down there. All right. Diverting your immune system all the time, by the way. Okay. Limiting your life. And you're, it's, you've got a, you're in this prison, okay? And it's not a criticism. We're all in our own little prisons, okay? Mm -hmm. right. We have to, I've got to find my own prisons, okay? Because I live on this planet too, all right? Okay. The moment when my mother said, don't be silly, and I currently feel angry about it. Okay. Yes. Now, we're going to bring an unseen therapist here in a bit because I want to work on this so you can get a sense of how this unfolds. Okay. But I'm going to do a little something first. Uh, I assume you're familiar with the term reframing? Yes. Okay, well, okay. We're going to do a little reframing here for the moment. It's, uh, it's, you've probably done this before in your own profession and all of that, but I have my own way of doing it, and it's, it's, it's the artistic part of this process, okay? Okay. But I, I, I want to look at a possible reframe for one of these, for one thing, okay? And you probably already have it, but here is your mother, Having not seen your father for two years, hormones being what they are, she was enjoying this tickling, if that's what you want to call it. Okay. I never thought about it any other way. That's interesting. Well, whatever it was, um, you interrupted her enjoyment. All right. No, did, I say, did, I say, did I say it right? Yeah, but I never thought that. I never thought of it from her side. Well, that's I, our, I did. I interrupted her enjoyment. That's yeah. Well, that's our that's part of our reframe. Now we want to take a look at. It's not your mother being mean. It's not your mother saying saying uh, you're not lovable or anything like that. It, your interpretation might be that, but that's not what she's doing. You interrupted her enjoyment. She doesn't know. Well, you tell me. I mean, would she know what you're really feeling at the moment? Would she know that you were there to save her and all of that? If she did at any level, it probably was the fact that she was interrupted probably overrode it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, yeah. <laughs> the importance of the reframe is to loosen up the idea that you really yeah. were you really were to blame in this situation. Right. No, she, I mean she loved me. She wouldn't. Yeah. You picked it up differently, but that's not. That's me guessing now. Okay, but that's not, as I see it anyway, how it was meant. Right. <laughs> I never thought of it. I mean, imagine yourself in the middle of an orgasm and somebody comes in. <laughs> 
some, somebody comes in and says, hey, hey, I need your attention right now. Okay. Stop I'm, hurting her. I said, stop hurting her. And to, <laughs> and to her, okay, whatever was going on, the term stop hurting her from a three or four year old child means you didn't, you, you, I, I, again, I'm guessing, but that's, that likely means uh, you don't really understand what's going on. You're too young. And, and the way to say that, oh, don't be silly. I mean, that's the kind of thing I might say, okay. Not having any idea the damage that it would do to the three or four-year-old, how they would interpret it. I should have said, you should have closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know that. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to go over that little piece of reframe. That reframe may land really well for now, or it, we, no, I it may, does. It, it, it gives me a different perspective. Definitely. Okay. Well, they have a way of landing even more emphatically over time sometimes mm -hmm. as well. So, but anyway, with that in mind, with that in mind, let's bring an unseen therapist and do a little something here. Does that okay. work for you? Mm -hmm, definitely. All right. All right. So if you would, just close your eyes. I'm going to narrate the whole thing, by the way. So you, you just sit there and go along. Okay. okay? Um, with one exception, that is something comes up that you think is worthwhile, you know, putting on the table here that, you know, speak up. Okay. Okay. Very, we have a flexible process. It's got some rules, but it's also flexible. So anyway, so you close the eyes. You, close the, you take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And um, just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, you just recall a simple, loving moment in your life. And just nod your head whenever you're there. You know, I went through the audio with this and I got a little stuck on that loving moment thing. And it I can, am right now too, a little stuck well, there. Well, have you ever had a dog lick you in the face? No, and I wouldn't like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> have you ever had a child hold out their hand to you and hold your hand? Have you ever had... Oh, um Okay. Well, tell me what you got. <laughs> well, um, it was just the other day something. But one that really sticks out was um, I had had this surgery and one of the drugs they gave me caused some short-term memory loss. And I was in the kitchen. I was trying to put this fork I was trying to put the cutlery away in the drawer and I was going to the drawer and I stopped. And I couldn't remember where the forks went. I just, I couldn't remember. I felt totally lost and helpless. And, um, you know, Tom, my partner uh, came in and he said, what's wrong? And I was so upset. And he said, you know, it's okay. Everybody can forget things like that once in a while. And I thought, what a kind way for him to excuse right. it and make me feel good. Okay. It was uh, just so, it struck me as so kind. You yeah, know? It, that's, a, that's a loving moment. You could also yeah. pick, out, pick out a loving moment from a TV program or a romance novel you've read or something. You know, uh, all you're trying to do here, all you're trying to do here is just align yourself as best you can with the pure love of the unseen therapy. You're not there yet. I'm not there. She is. All right. So you're just saying, okay, doing my best. And she's, she's listening all the time anyway, and also guiding all the time. We just aren't listening to her. But for the moment, what we're saying is we're going to align with you as best we can. A little loving moment. Okay. And we're going to, we're listening. We're going to hand you something. Need a little help here, and we're listening. That's all that is. All that is. Some people want to make it a Hollywood moment or something, but no, 
No, you don't need to do that. No. So anyway, we've got that. That's fine. That's fine. So now let's shift your focus back to here you are, age three, four, something like that. You're in bed. You're hearing your mother screaming. You're interpreting that she's not enjoying herself. She's being somehow or other injured at the hands of your father. Well, you I didn't know him. I mean, <laughs> you know. Well, okay. At somebody's hands anyway. Yeah. I mean, I and, didn't know him, but he, I didn't know him well enough. I didn't know who this man was. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there's some man, but anyway, you're interpreting your mother's. Well, I mean, I knew it was my father, but I mean, I, I just didn't know him because I hadn't met him really. You yeah. know. All right. Well, the important thing here is that you are interpreting this as that your mother is in some kind of right, danger. Right. Okay. Right. And you, in a loving way, are going to go protect her. Okay. <laughs> so you run in with words to that effect. And of course, your mother is, we're thinking, having a little enjoyment here. She's not <laughs> a private mm -hmm. moment, perhaps. <laughs> we don't know for <laughs> sure. Okay. But having, She's certainly not being attacked, okay? Mm -hmm. And you come in saying something like, I'm here to save you. I forgot the words you used, but, you know, you yeah. come in with this. And she, quite understandably, I would think, found that amusing <laughs> as she was interrupted from her enjoyment and, and said something like, oh, don't be silly. And you, of course... She said, oh, don't be silly. He's not hurting me. Oh, don't be silly. He's not. Well, he even, yeah. even explained it to you. Okay. But you still interpreted it. And you took it on, as you're telling me, with anger. You felt worthless. You felt angry about it. That witch. Well, not then I didn't, but today. T today. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Correction. Yes. Okay. Then you had your feelings, but now you think of that witch. You know, how would, I mean, I'm three or four years old. She could have done something better than that one. Okay. Uh, but then, you know, we look at mother, <laughs> you know, she's in, probably in a compromised position some, somewhere or other. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, but you know, it's, there is some comedy yeah, here. She probably was afraid that I was going to see too much or something, you know. She probably was compromised. Well, okay. <laughs> well, adults do compromise things. That's what happens. Okay. So close and, the door. <laughs> Just come back to that. Close the door. <laughs> yeah, you witch. Okay. All right. Close, <laughs> close the door. But see, but let's think about this for the moment. Here we are in this moment, and you're feeling, you've used several words, humiliated, worthless. You know, close the door, da 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 da. You are then in a way, blaming her because you're feeling bad. You are angry, 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 angry about it to an eight, at least as you described it earlier. Okay. Now. So I have a question. So that's now. Am I going with, I'm going with now, not then, right? Yes. Or both or. No, right. You're, you're going, you're going with, with now. that. You're going with that which we can change, which is how you feel about it now. Okay. All right. So. And so we're I still have some worthless now, too. That anger just came in like a little lightning bolt. But I think really it's still worthless. All right. All right. All right. Good feedback. Good feedback. So there you are. Some anger, although I gather the anger seems to be fading. Am I, would I be correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, but a worthless feeling, we're going to represent that metaphorically for the unseen therapist. And we're going to represent that. And this is a, something that's written in the book and so on. As an unwanted vibration somewhere in your body. It could be the heart, the stomach, the head, the whatever, wherever you choose. Ta-ta, 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 okay. It's imaginary. You don't have to actually create a vibration. It's just an imaginary thing that you do, a metaphor to give her. Okay. 
That represents this worthless and angry feeling, that emotional response, which is limiting you even to this day from that one event that has never been resolved. So you hand it to unseen therapist, and in your imagination, you allow unseen therapist to send a cooling, healing, loving breeze from her to you. It enters your body where the vibration is, and the vibration just can't survive. In all that love, that understanding. See, it's understanding. Love, yes, 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 yes. It's also unseen therapists understand. The young child cannot. Okay. And the adult understands academically, but the adult is still reacting to all of this in a way that limits her, you. Right? So this understanding love comes to this vibration and the vibration goes ta 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 now let's go through that one more time there you are oh don't be silly silly he's not hurting me and here comes the anger what's left of it the worthlessness ta 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 the cooling breeze, the healing, understanding, loving breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Which may be reinterpreted as let go, let go, let go, let go. Now, in your own imagination, take your time. We have all the time you want. Take your time and repeat that. Ta-ta, 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 being all the worthless emotion, what your mother said and everything. The cooling breeze, ta-ta, 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 let go, let go. Do that a time or two or three or more if you wish until you've gone as far as you can go. There are no grades for this. Whatever happens, happens. And when you're done, just open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk. I had some, um, when I went back and redid it the second time, I had some fear come in, too, um, that I had done something wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, I also had the thought that my mother was only in her 20s then, <laughs> you know. In a way, a child herself. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm her first child, too. Of course, there are going to be a lot of mistakes, but okay. there still are, you know, all of us, right? Uh, listen, I'm 81 and I make, I make mistakes daily. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I'm thinking everything I do every day, you know, I mean. Well, all right. So let me ask you, were you able to follow along well, or did you have a bunch of competing thoughts that knocked you off track or anything like that? I didn't go off track. I did. I was wondering, am I, um, I'm visualizing this vibration or I'm feeling this vibration, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's an imaginary, I mean, imaginary metaphor. Okay. Yeah, that's what happened. All yeah. right. Okay. So um, let's do a little testing. And one thing you'll learn in this course is I'm a great one for testing. I always want to know what's not 
done yet. Very important. Very important. Okay. Too many people just scoot right by with their Band-Aid. Okay. Okay. So that so, was all like that with EFT too, right? Always you went back testing, testing, testing. Well, not everybody did it well, but that's what we're supposed to do. That's what it's, yeah. 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 Okay. But anyway, anyway. Um, so close your eyes. Go back to that moment. There you are. And, and, and focus only on the anger part of it. We'll get to the other parts later. We started with anger. Focus on how angry you are. Run that movie in your mind, okay? And tell me on a scale of zero to ten, that anger was an eight. What is it now? I don't have any anger now. It would be a zero? Yeah, I think she's being silly. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wasn't there, but it's <laughs> I could imagine this, Barb, <laughs> um, being a central part of a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever did, did you ever see i tell you what's coming to my mind um this sitcom from years ago called all in the family yeah uh -huh. okay can you imagine archie bunker and edith <laughs> and coming in and and what's this i forgot the daughter's name she comes walking in it's gloria gloria <laughs> <laughs> would come in hasn't even met the meathead yet okay <laughs> Edith's response at the moment or Archie Bunker's response at the moment. Can you imagine oh what that goodness. would be? <laughs> so much worse. <laughs> well, at any rate, but, but you could, that would be a, a hilarious piece of that, of that comedy. That's if, if they put that in there. Okay. All right. But let's, let's close the eyes again and let's go back to the same thing and let's get a hold of the, worthlessness involved in that not in, not in general just in that event give me a number for the worthlessness i don't feel it because i feel like i did the right thing always there for the right reason <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's do, an, let's do another round as well. Eyes closed. Go back. And now, although we didn't really address directly the fear of having done something wrong, I want to know what your reaction to that fear is. Zero to ten. Fear is... No, oh, I feel like I feel like I was there for the right reason. Um, okay, all right. Okay, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Now I want to play teacher here for a moment. Uh, you know, I feel like else. who who would I have been if I thought she was being hurt and I didn't try to defend her? That would be so much worse. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah. You know. So I think I did the right thing. <laughs> well, what we're really looking for is, see, we're looking, that's a logical thing. Yeah. I think I did the right thing. Yeah. We're look, we're I, looking I for, feel like I did the right thing. Okay. All right. Like that, the right all thing. right. That's what we're looking for. You feel like it. Now, yeah. now, now, from a testing point of view, okay. I never, it appears we had some success here on that one specific event. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. I never want to be fooled, nor should you, by a temporary result. And we don't know if this is temporary, right. permanent, until time goes by. That's the only way you are going to know. Okay. Right. So tomorrow morning, when you wake up, run that movie again. And do it, do it in... Um, Exaggerated form, you know, exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feeling. Literally try. Yeah, I was like, you know, my hands on my hips. And <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, what I'm saying is when you run it in the morning, yeah, literally try to get yourself upset because yeah. you're looking for what's not done yet. 
Okay. And you want, if there is something not done yet on that specific event, you want to find it. You don't want to go band-aid time. Okay. Right. You want to find it. Now, this plugs into lessons, advanced lessons number three and number four in our course. They have to do with aspects, which I'm, you're probably familiar with that term. Mm -hmm. Okay. And foundational issues and so on. See, you already showed me aspect. We started with fear and we got partway into it. And in my experience, what really happened was the fear, the excuse me, fear, anger. The anger part, you even told me it was subsiding, but the yeah. worthless, oh, oh, here it comes. Okay. Yeah. So you shifted aspects right during it. Mm -hmm. right. And then the worthlessness, I think what happened from what you were telling me, then that subsided. And fear shows up, another aspect, another emotional response to the same event. All right. So you really need to understand, although you may have exposed, excuse me, I keep burping here. You, you may have had exposure to aspects and this kind of thing through EFTI, et cetera. Um, it's also written up and it, probably at a deeper level here than what you've seen before. Let me stop there. You have thoughts? Uh, am I on, am well, I on point? It seems to happen to me a lot when I'm doing my own uh, stuff is that um, aspect, I bounce around a lot, it seems like, you know, um, with people, aspect. People do. It's very important to understand what people do. And that's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because you're being told you're not done yet. What we want to do is just, See, one of the mistakes I made with EFT early on, with people would go tap, 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 and something would happen. Oh, that's all we need. Okay. Yay. A one-minute wonder. If we had a word for yeah, it. Yeah, I remember. A one-minute wonder. Okay. That was a mistake of mine early on, because I kept finding that these things tended to be, once in a while, it really was a one-minute wonder. Okay. Um, but most often, it was temporary, partial, Shows up again, the Band-Aid, if you will, the whitewash kind of thing. So here, here you're going to learn to really get down to it. And aspects are good things. That's a skill. You're, you, the skill to recognize these aspects is very important. Very important. Thank you.